Well, everyone, the graphic space is getting honestly pretty damn crazy. We've got a few really interesting stories today. A lot centered around, of course, NVIDIA and what they are doing because the scalpers have taken a pretty damn big L. But if we think that there's a whole bunch of pressure forcing NVIDIA, well, there is a little bit of a counter story that does have to do with some drying up supply. So let's get stuck in, right? Okay. Scalpers, they have absolutely been the bane of gamers over the last few years, right? All the latest and greatest cards, they get scalped up, they're on eBay for ridiculous sums of money, and of course, that is something that has happened again. But the difference is, with the 4080, scalpers are not really able to sell it above market rate. Now, to anyone who's actually deeply researched this stuff, honestly, I think uh, it's kind of obvious that that is the case. This was spotted by video cards. One scalper purchased six 4080s, right? And uh, now they're forced to sell them at just a smidge above MSRP in order to break even, right? Just like flat out, the market isn't what I thought. So instead of sending back to manufacturers, you can get them MSRP from me. Wow, right? Now, if you've ever sold something online, you might realize that this is completely insane because selling one of these things at MSRP when you bought it at MSRP means you're going to lose a significant amount of money to store place fees. Why is that? Well, in the case of, say, Newegg, yeah, they, uh, they've they just actually removed some refund options for 4080s. So that basically does mean that a whole bunch of scalpers have managed to screw themselves. You would hope the legitimate customers don't get caught up in this, obviously, but that we can have a big laugh at the scalpers. You know what? Fine, that is some, uh, you know what, rather poetic justice. Now, the thing is, why would somebody not buy one of these cards at a markup from a scalper whenever there has been decently tight supply, right? Well, the answer is 4080s really doing pretty shit. That seems to be the answer thus far in a way that's pretty different to the 4090, right? So what's happened to have NVIDIA just produced way more cards than they normally would, you know, more cards relative to demand? Or is the 4080 just not really a good value proposition for people? Because again, we've got to remember price and value are fairly different. I would contend that the 4090 is a reasonable value, whereas the 4080 is a very bad value. I, I mean, that's obviously taking into account that 4090 people will be price insensitive customers. But actually, when you go to the price performance curves of those two cards, you really do find that the 4080 just stops to make any sense. So, from Tom's Hardware, multiple sources worldwide are suggesting that the 4080s are not selling as well as NVIDIA would have hoped. They've checked reports and listings in the US, Canada, UK, Germany, and China, and in all of these, the sales do appear to be sluggish. One of the obvious reasons is price to performance, especially with that 4080 label, because it is just so damn expensive. It's almost as if the cost to performance curve just like kept on going up but not really a situation where the new generation is actually offering you know like for like in terms of the actual model number of a card um you know better better performance for the same amount of money so ultimately these are not really being a better deal they're just a new option for people who have got the money to pay for them with yes some pretty cool architecture features but you know, not really a massive amount. It's very hubristic pricing. And when you actually go through these, you very quickly realize that actually the 4090, basically you work out like the dollars per like frames per second. And uh, in many cases, the 4090 ends up being the better deal, which is quite hilarious. There has, of course, also been the PCI connector issue, right? So somebody has actually filed a lawsuit against NVIDIA. That was essentially where we're having these uh, new connectors basically just uh, go a bit melty, which is pretty damn bad. It seems to be that there's a little bit of a flaw where if they kind of get bent a bit too much, their failure rate just seems to skyrocket. Now, this is serious enough that uh, a cross-industry body called the PCIe SIG has actually made a public statement that's reminding their members so NVIDIA, that they alone are responsible for any safety testing of their designs. So that's very much saying, hey, the specification's ours, but you implemented it, so you've got to test that, which obviously is them trying to play it safe for themselves and also distance themselves from this particular story, I think, uh, wanting to make it very much look like the blame does indeed lie in NVIDIA. So, fairly interesting.
Now, an odd thing is that what NVIDIA says doesn't exactly line up with everything we've talked about here today, because if you listen to what Colette Kress, who is their chief financial officer, has said at the uh, Credit Suisse annual tech conference, so we've been undershipping. We've been undershipping gaming at this time so that we can correct that inventory uh, that, that is out in the channel. That means as we move forward, we will start to get back up. We will get to some point of an equilibrium between sell through and sell in. So that's interesting. NVIDIA are claiming that they're actually undershipping, which I guess just means they will put a smaller amount out of there and then they will, uh, you know, change up their manufacturing plans depending on the amount of uh, gamer interest that they actually see. This is where things do get a bit more interesting because from everything that we can tell, the 4090 has actually sold really quite fantastically. And that, I think, does make a degree of sense when you think about like a price insensitive, performance focused customer. Yet it does seem that maybe it's the 4080 that is struggling. So how does this actually line up with her statement? Kind of tricky to say, but I think the idea that scalpers are actually struggling to sell this one above MSRP, that really does tell us that something is at play. So with all this looking a bit rough for NVIDIA, a lot of people think that something is going to give. That's also because AMD have got their new cards coming out like pretty damn soon in December, and they really do look to be cost competitive. Now, they are actually very, very expensive cards because they are the top end, the flagships from AMD. And while they don't quite get the performance of a 4090, well, when you remove ray tracing and they're just kind of fighting in terms of raster, it I mean, they they do seem, at least per the extrapolations of Linus Tech Tips, like they could offer a pretty damn good deal to people. Now, what's going to be funny then is what that does to the 4080. There's a lot of rumors that the 4080 is something that NVIDIA may actually decrease in price because let's be real, the 1200 US dollars slash 1270 Great British Pounds is a insane price for that card. It literally does not even make sense with the pricing of the 4090. So who knows? I mean, $999 is, that's the threshold for the better of the two AMD cards. I wonder if uh, Nvidia will just try to price match that. Now then the funny thing is, we of course remember that this is just one 4080. Remember they tried to launch two 4080s, the 16 gig and the 12 gig. Well, what about that lower end model? Per, uh, per the rumor mill, the fate of this is that it actually is uh, going to be called the 4070 Ti. So this may actually be there to compete with AMD's cards. Maybe they're ones that are a little bit cheaper. Um, well, the cheaper of the two cards. People may be thinking a Q1 2023 release. And I suppose if we see these 4080 price decrease rumors actually come to pass, then that would have a knock-on effect on the 4070 Ti. So I probably would not expect to see the 4070 Ti actually ship with the price that NVIDIA were trying to get for it back when it was just called a 4080 12 gigabyte. But you know, brackets. It's a hell of a lot more different than just the VRAM because NVIDIA went absolutely goddamn insane in that one. So overall, what we're basically seeing then is 4090 does super, super well. And overall, NVIDIA have a pricing strategy that is trying to essentially get them some money from the scalping problem. They realize that during the 3000 series, with all of that scalping, people were willing to just go way above MSRP. So rather than the new generation being so, so, so much better in terms of frames for dollar at say the 4080, 38, uh, 3080 level, they instead were like, hang on a second, that money, we can just push the money line up. And that's pretty much what they tried to do. And they got called out on it, but not for the 4090 customers because the 4090 makes more sense than the 4080. I know that sounds weird, but basically if somebody could afford a 4080, it would generally make sense for them to get the 4090 because it actually is that much better. Again, price and value are slightly different things. Meanwhile, everyone else gets just a little bit screwed. Things then also get very interesting with this reporting from WCCF Tech, which essentially is that the amp it's the 3000 series GPUs, the supply is rather evaporating and the second-hand prices are actually on the rise. Fairly interesting when you go into it. Basically, they are talking about a steep enough 
price increase speculating that maybe this is scalpers buying up some of the secondhand GPUs in bulk, trying to resell them. Um, maybe it is that the existing supply of those secondhand GPUs is being used up. Kind of hard to tell exactly, but then there is a little bit of a worry there that if those 30 series prices actually stay up decently high, then, well, that, that's people's cheaper options for cards. In which case, that would reduce the pricing, like the pressure for NVIDIA to start to lower their own prices. It is, it is a very interesting uh, little turn of events overall in the GPU market. I think the real wild card here is just AMD and what they're going to do after these two more flagship cards come out. They really do seem to be able to hit value with that overall, uh, like, you know, with, with that architecture, right? I have got to wonder if the more, you know, affordable cards in that range, if they're just going to be able to clobber NVIDIA. I mean, I've seen some comment about some of the part costs of the NVIDIA cards compared to maybe a bit more of a economical uh, manufacturing process for the AMD side. I think it's basically that AMD are only going for like the latest, greatest, you know, smallest nanometer process for the bits that they really have to, whereas NVIDIA are kind of doing it for everything. Now that said, when it comes to uh, semiconductor supplies, I'm hardly an expert in that field. I do, though, think it's pretty interesting for us to talk about because we're, we are in a bit of a pivotal moment here. So the TLDR, for you guys to understand, is that there's a lot of price and sensitive customers out there, especially when we are in this time of, uh, I suppose, increasing income, uh, like inequality, right? I mean, you guys probably, you know, you hear all the stories about whatever country you're in, right? But if you go to, say, Apple, it's not the cheapest iPhone that's, like, the one that does the best. The one that does the best is usually the Pro Max, which is the big expensive one that's got the, you know, the big fancy cameras in them, right? That's fairly interesting. I think it does show that if you want to go for these higher margin devices instead of having to play uh, kind of like a big old commodity game, NVIDIA, they, they clearly don't really seem to feel like they have a massive rush to do that. People are, I guess, just snapping up, um, is it the 1650 and the 1660s? I mean, that's basically the case, right? Get a 1660 Ti, slap it into an old Dell Optiplex, and uh, there you go. That's pretty much what Linus Tech Tips and Bunch of other outlets I've been recommending that people do because it's actually getting pretty damn hard now. I mean, if you're in a CPU bound game, it could be a little bit of a tricky prospect. But still, I think we're seeing uh, changing times. There's a whole product stratification strategy with how they're sort of slicing up the model numbers, ratcheting all the costs up. Like we can see directionally where NVIDIA want to go. Do you remember? And I, I guess it's just, it's very easy to use Apple as an analogy here because. Um, well, they, they sell a fuckload of phones, right? But I remember the time when uh, Tim Cook, after he took over, was getting a lot of, just a lot of flack because it seemed like every year they just added on 50 bucks, 100 bucks. And they kept on doing that until they went a little bit too far. And then the next year they went back down again and they've just kind of stayed there. And they're pretty much always going to try to not set up every little time they think they can make a bit more. I mean, now, when you look at the iPhones, okay, sure, maybe the prices aren't going up every single year. Ah, but you, you no longer get one of these in the box, do you? They say it's green, but I mean, come on, it's obviously cost-cutting. So, we see this, I suppose, across so many different companies and so many different industries. Um, I mean, you look at, you know, you look at YouTube desk setups. I mean, it's all $300 Grovemade stands. And I mean, hey, that's fair enough. That stuff's all very nice quality, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, it's just becoming very clear to me that a lot of uh, segments of these industries are going to try to go to the people they can get the margin off rather than play the commodity game. And we're just seeing that in graphics cards. It is what it is. I'd say the secondhand market, but the secondhand market's actually sometimes pretty damn vicious. Oh, man. We'll have to see where this one goes anyway, but certainly... It's not the best time for budget PC building. Again, unless you're willing to just slap something in an old Dell Optiplex or something and, uh, you know, call it a day. Which, surprisingly, is uh, it's actually a pretty good idea these days. All right, well, with that said, let me know what your GPU journey has been. Have you been holding off on an upgrade? Are you one of the people who bought a, a 4080? If so, why? <laughs> let me know down below. Of course, plenty of other videos on the channel. See you next time.